Good afternoon. As Deputy Dean of the Part-Time Programs, it's my honor to welcome you to Chicago Booth's 2018 Executive MBA Program Graduation Ceremony. We're delighted that you can be here to celebrate the achievements of the men and women who are receiving their diplomas today. Over 21 months of hard work on our Chicago, London, and Hong Kong campuses have led to you being here today for this event. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for all of your support and patience during this time. We're very proud of our graduates, and we look forward to their continued connection to the University of Chicago and to the Booth School of Business. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce the Dean of Chicago Booth, Madhav Rajan. Please be seated. Good afternoon. I'm thrilled, delighted to welcome you to this important celebration. Let me offer my heartfelt congratulations to our XP87, EXP23, and AXP17 students. Today we celebrate the accomplishments of our most recent graduates. But it's also a day to show appreciation, to reaffirm aspiration, and to reflect on the school and what makes us distinctive. The personal achievements of our students is predicated not only on their hard work, but also on the support of their classmates, families, friends, and colleagues. To all of you who are here today, and to all those who could not be here, I thank you for the sacrifices you have made to support these students. I would like to add my thanks to the deputy deans, faculty, and staff for teaching and supporting another successful group of Booth graduates. I would also like to thank our executive MBA students. You have been exemplary members of the Booth community, both academically and socially. As Phil mentioned, you have spent the past 21 months traveling from over 30 countries around the world to engage in Booth dialogue and learning. Thank you for choosing Booth and contributing so much to our community. Our mission at Booth is to produce knowledge with enduring impact and to influence and educate current and future leaders. We believe that to develop and support outstanding individuals as business leaders, it's necessary to instill in them a firm grasp of the fundamental concepts and ideas, but also the ability to apply these concepts in a variety of real-world situations. Chicago Booth was established in 1898, which makes it one of the oldest business schools in the world. We were the first business school to offer an executive MBA program back in 1943. So this is a very special year for us. 2018 marks the 75th anniversary of the program. We began the program in Chicago, opened a campus in Europe in 94, first in Barcelona and now in London, opened a campus in Asia in 2000, first in Singapore and now in Hong Kong. We are committed to this triangular structure and as you know, are building what will be an iconic campus in Hong Kong. I view the faculty as a core differentiating strength of the school. And the faculty have two principal roles. So first, as I mentioned, the faculty create knowledge of enduring impact. What does that mean? In the Chicago tradition, this means asking and answering important questions about how the world works so we can understand it better and make better decisions, for example, as managers or policymakers. This is what Milton Friedman called positive economics. We develop theories and test those theories using data. This is our data-driven approach. If the data tell us the theory is not helpful, we adapt and try again. As you know, Raghuram Rajan returned to our faculty last year after three years leading the Reserve Bank of India, the India Central Bank, a role he took on in part because he wanted to see whether the ideas he developed here could work in a real world setting. The second role of faculty is that we disseminate that knowledge so it has impact, either by delivering a superior education 
or by disseminating that knowledge in other ways, such as through books, speaking engagements, school publications, and other channels. And members of our faculty have risen, written some amazing and impactful books in recent years. Uh, so a few examples are Amir Sufi's House of Dead, uh, Richard Taylor's Nudge, Nick Epley's Mindwise, just to give a few examples. The executive MBA program, including the fact that we have campuses in Europe and Asia, is a core part of this strategy, both as an integral part of the preeminent education that we offer, but also to ensure that we have influence and impact throughout the world. The development of theories to explain and predict real world phenomena, the testing of these theories with data, including now big data and using machine intensive computational methods, as well as the use of those theories to make real world decisions, this is what makes Chicago distinctive. Let me mention something else that makes the University of Chicago distinctive, and I think for all of us, personally proud to be faculty members here. And that is our strong and unbending commitment to academic freedom and freedom of expression. In the current socio-political environment, in the United States and elsewhere, many controversial ideas about trade, inequality, immigration, and other issues are being intensely debated, including ideas that some of us might find uncomfortable or even repugnant. There is a temptation to try and restrict the free expression of these types of ideas. The University of Chicago has been known since its inception to reject any such restrictions. As President Dimmer, uh, Zimmer, uh, Dean John Boyer of the college and others have clearly articulated, the University of Chicago has long been known for its fundamental commitment to the principle that debate or deliberation may not be suppressed because the ideas put forth are thought by some or even most members of the university community to be offensive, unwise, immoral, or wrongheaded. Instead, we welcome open and vigorous debate and expect members of our community to vigorously contest the ideas that they oppose. So as you graduate today, I hope you do so as proud alumni of not just the Booth School of Business, but also the University of Chicago, and that you fully understand what that signifies. On a somewhat different note, let me convey something else that I hope you leave here with. You have good reason to be supremely confident in your ability to succeed. I believe you are admitted to and are now graduating from the best business school in the world. So I'd like you to think about that. Just getting into Booth, let alone surviving and flourishing in the program is a huge achievement. And you're among a very small group that has had this opportunity. This should give you great confidence in your own ability to succeed in whatever path you choose. Finally, I want to encourage you to view your graduation as the beginning rather than the end of this relationship. We want you to be lifelong partners with the school as well as with each other. You now join a community of over 52,000 alumni, including a large number around the world. This community is as strong as you are willing to make it. Those who invest in the network and who give back to the school, not just financially, but also being involved with the school in many other ways, such as hosting student events, encouraging friends and colleagues to consider our programs, considering our graduates for positions at your companies, or sending your children to U Chicago. They find that this is an immensely rewarding experience, not just in terms of financial success or career goals, but by gaining friends, helping others, and building a community. And keep in mind that the community is again broader than Booth. You're also joining a large and very influential U Chicago alumni network. From the school side, I commit to providing you with a rich set of opportunities to continue this relationship with us, and in so doing, enrich your careers and lives. So let me conclude by congratulating all of you on what is a tremendous accomplishment, and wishing you all the best in whatever dreams you choose to pursue, knowing that the Chicago Booth community is here to support you in whatever path you choose. Congratulations, and thank you.
It's now my privilege to introduce Professor Mark Zemiewski, the Charles T. Horngren Professor of Accounting, who will present the graduation address. We asked Mark to speak during this 75th anniversary year because of his vital role in and his deep knowledge of the tremendous success of our executive MBA program ever since the mid-1990s, including his critical leadership in the successful introductions of our program both to Europe and then to Asia. Mark not only maintained and improved on Booth's history of excellence and of rigor for the executive MBA education in North America, but he also oversaw our executive program's substantial investment in becoming a truly global program committed to the same content and quality across our three global campuses. Mark's been on the Chicago Booth faculty since 1984 and specializes in applying accounting, economics, and finance to valuation and financial and securities analysis. For the period of 1996 to 2011 inclusive, Mark provided a remarkable 16 consecutive years of service as a deputy dean at Booth. He was the inaugural deputy dean of the part-time programs, which include the executive MBA program, during the period of 1996 to 1998, after which he served as the deputy dean for our full-time program before returning to his role as deputy dean for the part-time programs for roughly the final dozen years that he served in the dean's office. Mark has devoted tireless energy and enthusiasm to everything he's become involved with at Booth, including his work overseeing our executive MBA program. He remains a popular and almost legendary figure among many of our EMBA alumni who completed their program during the time while he was its dean, and he was responsible for hiring and or developing those who continue to lead our program to this very day, including Kathleen Fitzgerald, Intan Chen, Rich Johnson, and Patty Keegan. Mark received his bachelor's degree in 1976, his MBA in 1981, and his PhD in 1983, all from the State University of New York at Buffalo. He also taught at Sunny Buffalo before joining Booth in 1984. While at Booth, Mark received in 1999 the Hillel Einhorn Excellence in Teaching Award. Prior to that, he had received a 1988 Emory Williams Award for Excellence in Teaching. And he's also received the 1984 Competitive Manuscript Award from the American Accounting Association for his academic research. In addition to his long service as a deputy dean, Mark has taken on administrative roles at Booth as the faculty director of CRISP, or the Center for Research into Security Prices, and he's also served as the PhD program's faculty director. And finally, Mark has served on several PhD dissertation committees, including my own dissertation committee when I was a Booth doctoral student. Please join me in now welcoming your graduation speaker, Professor Mark Zemiewski. I think that introduction was longer than my talk, so apologies for that. <laughs> so I've been a faculty member here since 1984. You got that. Anyway. Good afternoon, graduates, friends, loved ones. Welcome to the University of Chicago and the Booth School of Business. I'm really humbled to be in front of you today and honored to speak to you today, especially here in Rockefeller Chapel. Rockefeller Chapel is a very special place for the university. It is a place where for nearly 100 years, faculty and newly minted alum alumni like yourselves reflected on accomplishments and lessons of the past and identified aspirations for the future. It was right over here 
I would come as an assistant professor back in the 1980s. I would sit down, walk through that door. We were located over there uh, before. And I would come to Rockefeller Chapel to think about my personal challenges, my own aspirations, and my responsibilities as a University of Chicago faculty member. Graduates, as you sit here today, I hope you'll do the same. My friend and colleague, Professor Harry Davis, likes to challenge entering students by asking them, why are you here? That can be a difficult question for an entering MBA student to answer, but not today. Today, it's a simple answer. We are here to celebrate your graduation from the University of Chicago's Booth School of Business. Congratulations. However, and there's always a however, however, now that you've earned a Chicago Booth MBA, you have three questions you can no longer defer. Where are you going? Why? And what's your plan on getting there? I don't have answers for those questions. But what I do have <laughs> is a way for you to think about guiding your actions in the future. And I challenge you to internalize the university's core values as your own. They'll guide your thinking, they'll guide your actions, and I believe internalizing these values will help you live a life of consequence. Leave a legacy behind of import. Before I talk about the university's core values, I thought I'd first give our guest out in the back over there some information about our graduates sitting here today, as well as our university and our program. The graduates sitting today, here today are from our AXP 17 class from Hong Kong, our EXP 23 class based in London, and our XP 87 class based here in Chicago. Our guests may not know that our class numbering system has a meaning. This is the 17th class to graduate from our program in Asia, our 23rd class to graduate from our program in Europe, and our 87th class to graduate from our program here in Chicago. Booth launched, as Madhav said, its executive MBA program in 1983. This was the first such program in the world. Our inaugural class had 52 students from the local Chicago area. Today, we celebrate 219 graduates that represent more than 40 different countries of citizenship and many more diverse cultures. The graduates from our program in Chicago live all across the United States from Massachusetts to Texas to California. Some of the guests might be wondering, well, why did Booth create the executive MBA program way back in 1943? We have two answers. One, the executive MBA program was formed to fill the leadership void in American business in the wake of World War II. The second, which you might not know, is that it is part of the school, the university's mission. In 1891, William Rainey Harper, the founding president of the university, declared that central to the mission of the university was to reach those who live beyond campus and did not fall into established categories of students. I'm sure President Harper would be pleased to know that to reach those who live beyond campus, we now have programs throughout the world and that the sun never sets on the University of Chicago or the Booth School of Business. Today, we're also here to celebrate the 75th anniversary of Chicago Booth's Executive MBA program. Booth was the first school to establish a program offshore taught by its faculty. Following Booth's innovations, the world has more than 300 Executive MBA programs offered in 30 different countries. However, from my biased view, Booth's Executive, M program, Executive MBA program is the most important, rigorous, and comprehensive program in the world. It makes me proud to look out in the audience here and see our graduates and know that Booth continues to hone the intellectual abilities of our students and challenge them to be the best intellectual version of themselves that they can be. Our guests may not know that we have 9,000 Executive MBA alumni. And that's part of a 50, over a 50,000 group of total alumni from the University of Chicago's Booth School of Business. They reside in over 100 countries. 
I've been fortunate to teach at Booth, as you heard, for a very long time, and in our executive MBA program for a very long time. I did some counting and I learned that I've taught over one-fourth of the executive MBA alumni and about 10% of all the alumni of our school. From my ongoing contact with alumni as a dean, as one of the deans, I know firsthand that the Booth alumni who have internalized the university's core values are indeed living lives of consequence. Here are six university values that I hope you will internalize. The first is meritocracy. President Harper and the other founders established the university as a meritocracy. For the university, that means implementing a hiring practice where we hire the best faculty, we hire the best staff, we admit the best students, and we ignore characteristics such as color, religion, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, national origin, political views, disabilities, because they are all irrelevant to our meritocracy-based organization. Only a meritocracy like the University of Chicago's can result in 97 Nobel laureates on the faculty, nine of which were awarded to Booth faculty. The second value is encouraging opposing, opposing views. President Harper declared, the university is to open to all people and all perspectives that can stand the scrutiny of argument. This is why Booth's faculty includes Nobel laureate Eugene Fama, the father of efficient markets and who focuses on rational models. And also Dick Thaler, our most recent Nobel laureate, who at times butt heads with rational models and introduces human behavior and psychology into these models. The third value is maintaining an environment of open competition, persistence, and a long-run view to encourage risk-taking to pursue innovation. Innovation and ideas become even more powerful when challenged and thoughtfully and thoroughly debated. At the university, we utilize an evidence-based approach to evaluate ideas, not dogma. And we encourage pushing an idea to the point of doubt to reveal its weaknesses. Necessary to thoughtful and thorough debate is the fourth value that Madhav already mentioned, and that's the freedom of thought and expression. That's not new at the university. In 1902, President Harper stated, the principle of complete freedom of speech on all subjects has from the very beginning been regarded as fundamental in the University of Chicago. In the current environment, while some see free speech as the enemy, the university continues its commitment to the freedom of thought and expression. We do not demonize others who think differently. We listen to their views and we debate them. The fifth value is clarity of communication. While creating knowledge is important, it is also important to be able to communicate knowledge in understandable terms. My favorite example of communicating research is Professor Merton Miller, another Nobel laureate, who explained his capital structure th irrelevance theory to reporters after he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics. Professor Miller first explained his theory to a reporter as the theory shows that the number of different types of claims a firm uses to finance itself, called the firm's capital structure, does not affect the firm's value. Therefore, a firm's capital structure is irrelevant. The reporter was confused and asked for a simpler explanation to which Mr. Or to, to which Professor Miller responded, think of the firm as a giant pizza divided into quarters. If you now cut each quarter in half into eighths, my theory says you have more pizza, I'm sorry, you have more pieces, but you don't have more pizza. I messed that up, I'm sorry. One more time, my theory says <laughs> that you will have more pieces, but not more pizza, which means capital structures are relevant. Lastly, the sixth value is when we are part of a great organization, like the University of Chicago and the Booth School of Business, our accomplishments are not solely our own. Our accomplishments are the results of the individuals and the intellectual infrastructure that form the very fabric of an organization. So these are the six core values I challenge you to internalize. In sum, manage your organization as a meritocracy. Encourage opposing views. 
maintain an environment of open competition, persistence, and a long-run view that encourages risk-taking and innovation. Encourage the freedom of thought and expression. Take the time to communicate clearly and often with employees of all levels of your organization. And remember that your comp accomplishments are not solely your own. They are the result of a larger group and should be celebrated as such. Now, I thought that was a good way to end my talk today, and then I realized, as a faculty member and a former member of the dean's office, I wouldn't meet my responsibilities if I didn't remind you, our new alumni, of your responsibilities as stewards of the University of Chicago, the Booth School of Business, and the Executive MBA program. There's only four things you need to do. First, make a difference. Act with integrity. Live a life of consequence. Second, equally important, support your fellow alumni and help them do the same. Answer the phone, respond to email, give a helping hand when you can. That's what makes our alumni network strong. Third, identify outstanding candidates for our academic program so our alumni network continues to grow and prosper. And fourth, participate in the school's activity and stay connected. Graduates, Congratulations, and thank you for earning the Chicago Booth MBA. Thank you. Before this congregation of scholars, family, friends, and colleagues, I will now present to Dean Rajan the degree recipients for the Master of Business Administration from the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. We ask that you kindly hold all of your applause until all of the diplomas have been awarded. Dean Rajan, these students have completed the program of professional studies prescribed by the faculty of the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. The global class of 2018 leaves our school stronger for their commitment to the program, to each other, and to the future of Chicago Booth. 
We're confident in their ability to go forward and continue to pursue the highest aspirations in their fields. It is with great pleasure and enormous pride that I present these leaders as recipients of the degree of Master of Business Administration. Associate Deans Patty Keegan and Richard Johnson and Managing Director Intan Chen will be reading the names of our graduates. Those not in attendance today will receive their degree in abstention. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Business Administration, and I express the hope that your work will further wise choices in the allocation of economic resources for the benefit of all people. Alexandra Alan Akat Sr. Neha Agarwal. Jyoti Agrawal. John Friedrich Leo Olson Berg. Yasmin M. Ahmed. Sean Yun Un. Paulo Antonio Almeida. Rashed M. Alumna. Zuhad M. Anwar. Ricardo Antonio Anzaldua Burke. Jason Robert Ashenfelter. Sarah E. Astley. Zhang Chol Bei. Shiji Bao. Yekaterina Bashulava. Sergei Vitalovich Bashkitov. Adila Baba. Avinesh Singh Bar. Javesh Budna. David Frank Brody. Jan Chai. Mansi S. Chaturvedi. Jochi Chen. Daniel Chi Yi Chu. Adrian Ping Tat Chua. Kyleton Karloff Collymore Jr. Dominique Corvez. John Dwayne Colt. William Jake Knoyer. Nicholas Eric Marie de Grivel. Mario Stivet. Anton Arkadevich Dimensov. Shi Deng. Timothy John Dennison. Uday Deo. Amol Anil Devare. 
Aja Awa Jakite. Ashitu Job. Robert Dietrich. Cedric Lionel GBC. Eric D. Donovan. Brendan Downing. Tyler James Durham. Ernest Andrew Eisenberg. Yvonne Igandu Isiri. Brian McNeil Everest. Nicholas A. Fiasconi. Charlotte Elizabeth Forster. Troy Daniel Freeland. Travis James Fry. Jose Luis Garcia, Jr. Ashwin V. George. Anahit Gevorshkin. Carlos Jimino. Carl Brucker Graham. Harika Bose Gudanti. Sebastian Daniel Gouchard. Gregory Kohler Halligan. Feng Tao Ho. Kaiser Chak Lam Ho. Marvin Ho Wan Shin. Logan Patrick Houlihan. Shangji Hu. Lily Hu. Fabian Humble. Jeremy William Husson. Hariyoshi Ichikawa. Nina M. Jackson. Shen Chi Jiang. Vrinda Johnson. Omukolapo Akande Joseph. Anapurna Kalavagunta. Baxer Kalita. Vikrant Bimrao Kamble. Nubuaki Keto. Yoshihiro Kawamoto. Adnan Khan. Mayank Kurana. Vadim Alexandrovich Klimenko. Dmitry Klochkov. Natalia Kulupaeva. Igor Kopriunika. Unika. 
Nathan Kuhana. Mikhail Kozevnikov. Eileen Marie Krabel. Philip Joseph Kreis. Karim Sia. Andre Kuropiatnik. Crystal Lamb. Rakesh Laroya. Tim Lorries. Matthew Lawson. Heather Lever Spear. Stephen D. Levin. Charlene Lim. Chao Chang Lin. Matthew John Logan. Star Lopez. Guillermo Lopez Campo. Duke Lu. Eric Macbeth. Jeremy Grant Martin. Enrique Matamoros Panero. Hideki Matsui. Karatbek Pavlianku. Elvis Mbai. Mahogany K. Mead. Rakesh Ravi Menon. William Edward Meyer, Jr. Ashish P. Modi. Mikhail Mogachev. James Moon Mock. Michael Anthony Montagano. Thomas Edward Morris. Adil Mukhamedjanov. Naresh Muchandani. Sean Michael Molloy. Robert James Murray. Shashank Narayan. Jane Hyung Win.
Min Fong Yang. Damosa Nirwan. James A. Norris. Fumilayo Oke. Xiaomin O. Jacob Watara. Sabolch Paldi. Amish Patel. Parit Arun Patel. Vitali Chelnikov. Stephen Lansing Pedrone. Ranjit Pendurthi. Vinu Peter. Vesna Petronich Rosich. Ronald Casper Provenzano. Alex Chi. Alan Lee Quirk. Michael K. Rahimi. Amif Rajan. Ashwin Singh Rajput. Shiva Ralapali. Sakib Mahmoud Rande. Alexander Legoic Rezegniak. Gwendoline Marie Reynolds. Helena Robbins Huddleston. Daniel Hezekiah Robinson. David Romanoli. James Lee Romeo. Juan Miguel Safon Sanin. Deepa Avinash Sapatnekar. Taras Sarapin. We shall Satsena. Stefan Soyer. Gaurav Sekri. B. Gray Lia Semi. Sakif Shamim. Devi Sankar.
Avinash Santaram. Crystal Hansen. Amir Saleh Shenek. Olusanjo Abayomi Sodimo. Si Mingchi. Mustafa Ashek Sidiki. Jehanjeb Sikander. Angelia Marianne Simmerman. Maharaj Singh. Siddharth Singh. So Winder Singh. We pull Singh Hal. Manish Sonny. Daniel Mark Spanier. Andre Rodrigo Spellmeyer. Adrian Stantuglescu. Nicolas Stefano. Florian Studer. Sun Lei Petru Surfel Drico Sarfras Mohamed Taj Peter A. Tate Rojihun Desat Towilit. Scott Taunton. Jam Eming. Kevin Tong. Alexander Trofimov. Sai Vishnu Batala. Heather Wade. Wang Guan, <laughs> Wang Chen, Clifford Stephen Weber.
Timothy Ryan with Matthew James Welk. Andrew Winoto. Michael Wong. Z. Lin Wong. Winston Wu Yan Seng. Wu Guan Hua. Andrea Wies. Leon. Xi Chen Lia, Xi Wang, Hans Clifford Ong Yao, Gerai Yusifov. Scott Christopher Zaleski. Zhang Pingping. Stella Cho. MD Islam. Today is a special day for all of you upon whom I've just conferred a degree. And it's a special day for the family members and friends who may be here to join you. It marks the completion of your MBA studies, a path that I trust has been challenging. I hope you're enjoying this moment of celebration and perhaps a moment of reflection that this day affords. You're all now graduates of the University of Chicago. Congratulations. Because of your achievements that we celebrate here today with your family and friends, each of you will always be connected to the University of Chicago, a connection that I hope you and we will foster for many years. And so, to all of you degree recipients, please accept my congratulations for all that you have achieved. I wish you all good fortune and happiness in the years ahead. Enjoy your coming adventures wherever they may lead you. Thank you.
Following our recessional, please join your classmates, family, friends, faculty, and staff at a reception that will be held across the street in the Harper Center. Thank you all very much for being with us today. This now concludes our graduation ceremony.